So let's go. In today's video, you're going to learn a technique to make your songs low end, less crowded, fuller and better with five simple steps that you can apply to almost every track. And you're going to make your song sound from this. To this. a lot better right you can see the full mixing of this song over here in the top right corner but today we're only focusing on the low end and we're gonna start by mixing the kick let's dive in into Ableton and let's go right into it so we're here in Ableton and the first thing that we're gonna do over here in our track is make sure that our kick is at the perfect level because if it's too quiet it's gonna sound a bit empty and if it's too loud it's gonna sound a bit overwhelming so we have to make sure that the kick is at the perfect level but how do we make this so essentially the way that I think that this is the best way to do this is by choosing reference tracks and listening and comparing your tracks to them. So I've chosen three reference tracks that you can listen over here. Second. Third. It's important for us to choose reference tracks that are in the same genre as the song that we're making. Not necessarily the same key, it doesn't have to be in the same key. But it's really important to choose reference tracks because reference tracks can help us understand if what we have in our track at the moment is too loud or too quiet. But before we do anything, the first thing that we have to do when we choose reference tracks is making sure that the songs are in the same loudness as our tracks. So listen to this for example. And you see how everything sounds like it's in the same loudness? So let's listen again. Original. Perfect. We have this at the same loudness. But now let's focus our attention in the kick. And that's the first reason why we choose reference tracks. To make sure that our kick is in a good spot comparing to a reference track. So let's listen to this again. And try to pay attention to the kick. Now listen to the original. Reference again. Original. Can you see how the kick in the original is really quiet? So that's already the first thing that I'm seeing that I have to do. I need to raise the level of my kicks. And that's an information that I only got because I used reference tracks. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. The second thing now that we're going to have to do is by how much do we have to raise the kick? And for this, we're going to use a spectrum analyzer. So we have our kick over here. We have our spectrum and you have to choose these settings over here. If you're using Ableton's or if you're using span, make sure to use these settings over here. You can pause the screen and take a screenshot, but we're going to use Ableton, which is essentially the same thing. And if you listen, the kick of our track is playing over here at minus 13, around minus 13 dB. But if you listen to the reference number one, sort of around minus nine, let's listen to this period over here. Can you see that the kick over here is playing at minus nine dB? Now let's listen to reference number two, minus 10. And let's listen to reference number three, minus seven. So if we are quieter than all three references, it's possibly because our kick is a bit too quiet. By how much? Well, at least 3 dB because we are at minus 13 and the quietest kick is at minus 10. But if we want, we can go up to minus seven because again, we chose a reference track that we love and the kick is at minus seven. So our kick could sound nice at minus seven as well. Essentially, you're gonna have to decide, but for this one, I'm gonna try to get the kick around minus nine and minus 10 dB. So we're going to go here in our track and we're going to raise this kick up to it reaches minus nine. Now let's compare our kick to the reference track again. It has a bit too much attack and that's why we had this EQ over here. Maybe 
we don't need this cut over here. But can you see how we got our track a lot closer to the level of the kick of the reference track? And again, that's something that we only would have done with a reference track and with a spectrum. But we can apply the same thing to the sub. Why not use the same technique that we use to mix the kick to mix the sub as well? So for the sub, we're going to listen to the sub of our track and see what level it's playing at. This is playing at minus 13. And if we listen to the reference track, let's put it at this point over here because this is a bit better. The kick is playing over here at minus nine and the sub is playing at minus 11. So sub equals minus 11 dB and the kick equals minus 9 dB. So what this is telling me is that the sub equals the kick minus 2 dB. Let's see if the same formula applies to the second track. We have the kick over here at minus 10 and the sub over here at minus 11. So the second track, we have the sub at minus 11 dB. The kick equals minus 10 dB and the sub therefore equals the kick minus 1 dB. You can see that the first thing is that the relationship of the sub and the kick will vary from track to track. So that's why it's important to choose tracks that you like as reference tracks. But essentially we have maps of where we have to go with our subs. The sub of our track has to go either at minus 1 dB of the kick or at minus 2 dB of the kick. You can choose again. Now I think that I'm going to keep it at minus 11 again, so minus 1 dB. Let's see how it sounds like this. It's a bit too loud. It's a bit too loud. There you go. This is playing at minus 11. Yes, perfect. So now when we listen. There we go. Again, something that I wouldn't have understood how much precisely I need to go up without the help of the spectrum over here and the reference track. And we can do the same thing for our basses. Let's listen to this portion of the bass right now. So listen to this only. And you see how this is louder than the kick itself. And if we listen to the reference over here. This portion is playing at minus 16 in the first reference and the second one. Essentially at minus 18 with peaks at minus 16 again. So let's pick this channel over here, which is the culprit of the region. And let's put it a bit quieter. Maybe one more. So I lowered it in 7 dBs. And the only reason why I lowered it in 7 dBs is because, again, I'm watching the spectrum and I'm seeing how much I need to go to match my reference tracks. And now if we listen to the low ends of this track and the low end of the reference and the low end of the reference number two, can you see how they are really close? And again, the reason why we got everything in our base section closer to the reference tracks is because we followed it with the spectrum and with our reference tracks. So now let's go to the non base section of cleaning up our base elements. So now let's listen to this element over here in our track. We have this pad over here, which has a lot of bass. And we have to clean this up because if we play this with our bass, we can barely listen to the bass. So how can we do this? And what should you do to almost all the other non bass elements that you have? Pick an EQ and cut it to around a moment that you feel that it has a good balance between the bass and the pad. Maybe more. In context now, without it. 
Run with it. Can you see how we listen to the bass a lot clearer and the low end is a lot less crowded right now? And that's really important because once you get this done in your tracks and you apply this EQ over here to other tracks as well. So for example, to this one over here, you can see that if we take this EQ, there are some low end frequencies here as well. And we're gonna apply the same thing. Without this, and with, we're essentially opening up space for the bass to shine through, and we're gonna apply this to almost all the elements, so this way we don't get our low end crowded as well. And that's it. Let me know over here in the comments below, how do you make to make your bases less crowded? And also if you like the videos with more tips like this, let me know also in the comments below so I can make more videos like this to you. I hope to see you soon in the next abstract video next week. Ciao.